Oh, hello, ladies. Hi. Good morning. What you doing? You curious? You curious about me being over here? I was just looking at my cows. I just look at them a lot. They just make me so happy. Things are progressing wonderfully out here in the herd. They are mixing and mingling just fine. Occasionally, Mama Friendship will push the goats out of her way when she wants their hay, but she does not use her horns with them and she's not really that forceful. She's more like, hey, move out of my way. So what we are doing though is trying to figure out how to remedy this temporary situation and make it more permanent because it's not working out too well for the goats. It seemed like it was working just fine, but we have very curious goats and they quickly found out that one, it's not electrified because it's attaching to other fences. We could not electrify it. And two, if they work at it hard enough, they can push as a group and get one of the posts down little stinkers. We added a field fence here to connect. We've got a section of cattle panel for a little doorway. So we've got to get the rest of this wire unrolled. It goes into the trees here and it's going to cut through the privet and briars over to there. There's a post over there that connects to the rest of our fencing around the property. So this is the other side. So we're gonna come right through here where it's the thinnest and then it's gonna take a hard turn to a fence post located right there. And then the fence post runs along here. It cuts straight that way to the edge of the property line and it goes all the way down the property line through the trees, across the back of the trees where the property line is, connects up to that corner and then that along that side is all barbed wire. The barbed wire and the thick, dense tree lines along this side of the property are probably more than enough for the cows. They are not fence testers like goats. These ones aren't anyway. I know some cows can be, but we have um, ones that are not like that. So we're super fortunate and they, will obey the fence pretty well. Um, the chances of them getting out are pretty slim once we have that situated. But if the goats keep getting out, I wanna make sure that they're not gonna try to go through that fence and get into the neighbor's property. So I have all the way up to that cedar, that short little cedar, I have double lined with electric net fence but I'm almost out and I still have from the cedar and that back section to do until it gets super dense and thick in there where I'm not worried as much that the goats would try to get out in that dense brush because they're going to be too busy eating the dense brush to try to get out. That's my theory anyway. The good news is, is the properties on all three sides are just hay fields so there's no risk or danger to them if they were to get out into the neighbor's property. Um, the biggest risk is right here where our neighbor has some azaleas and rhododendron in his front yard. So the rest of it is safe territory, but we're gonna try to keep them on our property at all costs. So what that means is we need some more electric net fence to double up on the barbed wire. So we're thinking it might be best to go ahead and let the goats and the cows have free range of the entire paddock for a little while while we get things situated before we're able to do a hard fence cutting across to separate. As you can see, they really, really, really know that this is not electrified anymore. We did T-post along the bottom so that they wouldn't pull up and go under the fence and that worked. For a while, we weren't having any issues, but we have a couple of turds that like to figure things out. You see her thinking? You see that? She's thinking. Ryan's measuring. We're gonna see what we have, see what we can do. 
to make it better and be able to give them all of this area at least temporarily. Our long-term goal is to actually divide this paddock up into three or four sections with permanent fence and that way we can rotate them through each of the sections. goats like being out. We took down the fence, ran it all along here, connected it across the back, and then kind of cut off that corner there going into the woods to just try to keep them in the pasture area for now, temporary, and with supervision for sure. Today we've got the fence open while we work on it. The cows, the bees, the goats, the dogs, the chickens, the ducks, all just commingling out here. And the fence is up. So now all we gotta do is take down that electric net fence and we've got a secure place to keep the goats and to let the cows go in and out when we want them to. So we did some wheeling and dealing and bartering. It's one of the coolest things about being homesteaders and farmers is how willing other farmers are to barter. So we have sent Patience and Fern on their way as payment for moving our tractor and getting this fence put up. And we have included sweet pea so that we can get our greenhouse moved when we're ready for that. What do you think about that, Ryan? I am so excited. <laughs> Me too. So all we need now is to find some labor, some people who are willing to help us break down the greenhouse and load it on to the flatbed and then unload it off the flatbed here and then put it back up. So it's that's the hard part so we'll see we'll see we're well, not sure when that's gonna happen but hopefully it's soon hopefully before spring did you have something you wanted to add to that Odin were you talking to the camera where are you going are you reaching for me or the camera uh, yeah <laughs> Hello ladies. What do you want? What do you want? I know what you want. I'm just coming out here to get my shoes on. Uh, yeah. Yep. Gotta get gotta get these boots on. I tell you having cows makes me realize oh there's leaves in my shoes. How important it is to have really good waterproof boots. Because these cows are much, much messier than goats. <laughs> this part of our fence project is almost complete. All we gotta do is install this gate. We're using this cattle panel temporarily. But the rest of it has been completed. Now the cows, the goats, and the dogs are all in here. And they cannot get out. Whew, it's weird. Yesterday it was like 70 degrees. Today 
it's a cold 50. You know, 150 can be warm sometimes, but sometimes it's not because the wind is ripping through you. So here is our fence. Ta-da! Isn't it beautiful, guys? Isn't it great? I am so pleased. We got a 10 foot gate on this end and then it goes all the way across and connects to the hard fence on that side just like we were hoping for so eventually my idea was that the cows would be out on this side of the pasture and the goats would be on that side so we are still trying to tame the cows up a little bit so we're we're keeping them in with the goats still but we are opening the gate and letting them go out and graze as well so even though it feels cold and windy out there it actually feels nice and warm in here in my she shed which makes me super happy because yesterday we moved our shelves in because it's time to start some seeds woo -woo. so we have grow lights with seed starting mats for heat. Um, I got a couple of more grow lights on clearance at Tractor Supply. They're not actually grow lights, but they work really well for our setup and starting seeds. We just have to place them close to the seedlings. I will definitely be putting a covering over this door to trap in the warm air as it will develop inside of here. It will get warm. We have the sun coming in from the top. We have the black walls and um, the lights will put off a little bit of heat. These two will. Um, this one will not because it's LED and the other two new ones are LED so they won't put off a lot of heat. But the seed tray mats will set off some heat and if the temperature doesn't stay warm enough for getting the seedlings started in here then I will actually house this with some plastic as well to trap the heat better in that location so that they will germinate fine. We will be germinating tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, and then some of the um, brassicas that take longer to grow like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and cabbage. So those are the ones that take a lot longer to grow for us so we get them started early so we can get them out earlier because it'll get too hot for us to grow them into the season here in Georgia. All right, let's get these animals fed. I haven't quite developed a routine. Um, obviously we just got the fence finished so a lot of things change and we're just kind of trying to go with the flow adjust our schedules how we need to adjust our methods how we need to because this is a new property for one for two it's new animals for us we have both worked with cows in the past in our previous lives ryan worked for four years at a sheep dairy that had cows that he also milked and he worked on milk training and everything. So he's got probably more experience than me because my experience with cows was from when I was much younger. Um, I grew up with a dairy farm community and spent a lot of time on the dairy farms, but it was never my responsibility. It was never my job. I just went there and helped and uh, had fun doing it as a kid and learned a lot but not nearly as much as I would have if I was older and paying closer attention. So I'm learning a lot these days. I'm learning that goats are way easier than cows in many ways. Hi baby girl. How are you mama friendship? We are working on getting her weight back up. She has had her calf pulling her down quite a bit but she's not too bad you don't, can't see any ribs but her hip bones are sticking out more than you'd like to see on this breed and lashes is a big reason why <laughs> you can see lashes isn't lacking she's plump 
You're so full. Yes, you are. Hi, sweet girl. So we've gotten to the point where we can have them take food from our hand, but they still are not comfortable with touch yet. So we have a long ways to go. And from the people I've talked to, it can take a while. And they were touched and handled at their previous farm. So it's just a matter of time that they get used to us. And Titus is getting them used to him as well. He's, he's been pretty good. He goes right up to mama and touches her and she doesn't care. And he noses and smells all over her and she doesn't care. But I did see him kind of run at Lashes one time in a playful way. And Lashes didn't like that. So we got to keep that puppy tame so that the animals will all get along and they won't be afraid. But that usually happens. It just takes a little bit of time. Are you bringing my helper? Yeah. Is he all bundled up? He is. Because it's windy out here. He's, he, he said he didn't need it, but I said, you got to have a jacket and a hat. Mama said, hi, buddy. His hands, he's like, okay, my hands are a little cold. <laughs> Is he pooping? I just hit record. I hope he's not pooping. <laughs> Are you pooping? You just want mommy. Are you straining? Oh, take that hat off, ma. Put the hood up, see if that... Okay, maybe he'll let you keep the... Oh, he said moo. He saw the cow. Moo. Moo. <laughs> okay, so... I'm trying to decide when we should butcher the roosters. Just kidding, that's not what I was gonna say. I'm trying to decide if I should put some hay out here and let the cows out, or if I should put it all in there and let them eat and then let them out. Hmm. And I think that if I tried to put hay out here and let the cows out, that the goats would try to come out too. And that might be kind of hectic. What, what are your thoughts? I wonder if we would need to move the dog move the dog first yeah cause, or, well, they or leave through. the dog yeah, because like the goats up. might stay put if the dog is there and the cows will come right through where the dog is i don't know i think try put some out here we're gonna see. have to try a few different ways and and see what works best before we know for sure i'd say put some hay out here and see if they come out and if and if it looks like they're not coming out then we'll reassess but what if the goats all start to come out? Because, I mean, yeah, the goats can come out here. We have it pretty well set up for the goats, but it's not perfect. And I don't know that we're going to be out here all day. Yeah. Because we have some deer to butcher. So that's going to be inside work. But we're home. I, I think leave it open and see. You just want to let them all out? Yeah. But I want to see what I'm going to be able to do when you're not here, though. Right. When I can't let them all out. I want to see how just letting cows out goes. If it's doable. Am I able to? Let's try it. And okay. see if it works. We'll try it. a couple of attempts to see if I could get the cows out without letting the goats out I realized it was going to be impossible because the goats really wanted to get out so we just finally said okay let the goats out we'll be out here working on the gate and some other projects anyway so went ahead and let them go out I'm sure I'll figure it out eventually if there's a way to just let the cows out without letting the goats out or maybe not Maybe, maybe that's just a, a wishful thinking and a, a, a pipe dream of mine. But if you guys have any suggestions on how I might be able to do this in an easy way that doesn't involve extra resources, I'd love to hear your ideas. So if you could leave your ideas in the comments down below, having two different animal types besides poultry sharing a space is something that's new to us and we are figuring out 
what we like about it, what we don't like about it, what we need to change, and how to do it better. So any advice you guys have on any of the situations we encounter is greatly appreciated. Odin, are you done putting that gate up? Did you finish? Let's see how it closes, Daddy. We kind of had to let the goats out because we had to work on this. Awesome. So this gate will be across here. We're getting our hole dug. Daddy's digging it. <laughs> Slowly but surely. So we just have to set the six inch post and we're good to go. Yeehaw.